to the beauty parlor, she got a mud pack. For two days, she looked nice. Then the mud fell off. <laughs> you know that uh, Phyllis Diller was supposed to do this thing here with us today, too. What, what happened? Well, she was home teasing her hair, and it bit her. <laughs> I went to the beauty parlor today. I was there seven hours. That was just for the estimate. You can turn a giggle right into a roar Without a word, just a look And he's a mad, mad Tonight's Mad, Mad, Mad Comedians are Jack Benny, George Burns, Phyllis Diller, Georgie Jessel, Jackie Leonard, Groucho Marx and the Marx Brothers, the Smothers Brothers, Flip Wilson, Kenny Youngman, and Paul Fries recreating W.C. Fields at the Palace. He's a mad, mad, mad comedian, and he'll make you laugh. The Mad, Mad, Mad Comedians are brought to you by... Flip Wilson's coming in. I heard Flip Wilson say a very funny thing. He says, we have a great many problems these days, and I wish I could find a solution for them, but I'm one of the problems. <laughs> He's a mad, mad, mad comedian. He's Flip Wilson. Everyone has idols, right? As a kid, my idol is Christopher Columbus. <laughs> What a great thing that was, discovering America. I wouldn't have found it. <laughs> you know, discovering America wasn't a thing that Columbus had gotten wrapped up in after getting older. As a kid, this was all he talked about. He lived in a little town with his mother and father. Their names were Mr. and Mrs. Columbus. <laughs> Everybody thought Chris was off his cookie. And they'd say, Christopher Columbus, what are you, what are you gonna do when you grow up? And he'd say, I'm gonna discover America. <laughs> They say, you better cut that out. <laughs> you know there isn't any America. You know the world is square. Christmas say they sure are. <laughs> At 35, he'd gotten out of grammar school. He arranged an audience with the queen, Queen Isabel. Isabel Johnson. <laughs> that was the queen's name. And she asked him about this America project, and Chris tells her, if I don't discover America, there's not going to be a Benjamin Franklin or a Star Spangled Banner in the land of the free and the home of the brave, and no Ray Charles. <laughs> when the queen heard no Ray Charles, she panicked. The queen said, Ray Charles? You gonna find Ray Charles? He in America? Chris said, damn right, that's where all those records come from. <laughs> so the queen's running through the halls of the castle screaming, Chris gonna find Ray Charles. He gone to America on that boat. What you say? She wrote him out a traveler's check. <laughs> Chris ran the local Army Navy store. He bought, he bought three used ships, two pair of fatigues, some shades. Then he got his supplies for the trip. He got two chicken sandwiches, three cans of Vienna sausage, five cases of scotch, and then he got a new rag to tie his head with, too. <laughs> Ready to leave. All the photographers and the reporters are at the pier to see him off. All the girls are there. They're all screaming, Goodbye, Columbus. He gone on that boat. He gone to America. Isabel was there, and she'd had a few. <laughs> Isabel saying, Chris gonna find Ray Charles. <laughs> Chris said, Be cool, Isabel. Be cool. We had gotten out of the harbor. The first mate asked, Chris, which way is America? Chris said, I don't know, we're gonna have to sail around and we bump into it. <laughs> so we better go this way. If we go that way, we'll sail off the edge like them other guys. A <laughs> hundred
hundred days later, the men are ready to mutiny. Chris has been goofing. He's been going through a bit like, back up, make a right, watch out for the edge. <laughs> right then, a piece of wood floats by the ship. Chris said, there's a piece of wood. So we're not far from America, that's American wood. Right then, the guy in the mast yells, land ho! Chris said, what does that mean? Well, so that means he sees land. Chris said, well, pull over. <laughs> Maybe that's America. You're going to pass right by it. You guys don't even know America when you see it. I said, that is America. I said, look at all those spacious skies. <laughs> those amber waves of green. I said, dig that purple mountain's majesty. I bet there's fruit out there on the plain. It's a big holiday in America that day. Big holiday called not having been discovered yet day. <laughs> All the Indians on the beach, they're celebrating. They got sandwiches, six packs. <laughs> three or four bags, whatever it is they put in the pipe. <laughs> Chris leans over the rail of the ship. He says, hey, yo! Yo! Where is this? Fine little Indian girl. Fine little Indian. Fine little West Indian girl. <laughs> Standing there on the beach. She said, why? What's your name? My name is Christopher Columbus. I'm a discoverer. So I'm going to discover America. You can discover y'all. <laughs> little Indian girl said, we don't want to be discovered. You can't discover nobody if they don't want to be discovered. <laughs> First mate said, Chris, they're hostile. <laughs> Chris said, yeah, and they mad, too. <laughs> he said, but we're going in there anyway. That's America. They can't keep us out of there. America belongs to everybody. Back down the longboat. And they pile into shore, and they're heading into the boat, and the men are laying down because the Indians are throwing rocks and spears and flaming arrows and tree trunks, yelling out a bunch of profanity about Chris's mother and everything. <laughs> First mate said, Chris, we better not go in there. Those Indians are crazy. Chris said, turn the boat around. We'll leave. We'll make a map and give it to the pilgrims. The pilgrims are fixing it. Have you ever have you heard the recently from Jack Benny? Not a dollar. Jack Benny and I studied with the same teacher, Nero. <laughs> Jack Benny and George Burns. When the evening sun is sinking, I've been thinking, I've been thinking of my little long cabin home. I don't know why we didn't use my car. Well, don't worry about the Maxwell. It gets you there and brings you back. Yeah, as long as there and back is downhill. <laughs> downhill, downhill. Always making demands. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> Why are we slowing down? We're coming to the bridge. We have to go across, don't we? I don't know. The last time we swam to save the toll. Don't be ridiculous. Gee. What is it? They raised the toll from a quarter to 50 cents. I know what you're thinking, Jack. But I didn't bring my scuba suit. Yeah. And anyway, the Maxwell gets cramps. But 50 cents? Gee, you're right, Jack. 50 cents is outrageous. Refuse to pay the extra quarter. I'll back you up. Well, that policeman looks awfully big. Now, you be sure to back me up all the way. 50 cents. Officer, I think 50 cents is outrageous. What? What kind of cheapskate are you? All right, George, back me up. Back I me was up. never meant for President, but you can bet I'll be content to stay there, never. George, back roll. me up. All right, all right, now you wait here. You did great, Jack. Kind of patriotic. What happened to the backup? I'm with you all the way, just say the word. Okay, tightwad, give me that half a buck. All right, George, now. Now, now. The house is not good looking. You'll enjoy the cooking when you leave. My mother's up. Stop. 
stay there. You're making him think, Jack. This bridge isn't worth 50 cents. Well, you tell him that. You're blocking traffic for miles. Now pay up the 50 cents. Tell him about the bridge, George. George, the bridge. Well, what about the bridge? Nice bridge. What? You can have your son of a bill as with your name upon your fellows and your castles by the Nile. I wouldn't give a dollar for a piece of hat Apollo. Well, you had to wear your collar all the while. Oh, stop complaining about your cramps. When we get home, I'll give you a rub down. <laughs> You know, Groucho Marx is going to be on this show. Yeah, they tell me he is. I don't know how old he really is, but he's got a bump shoulder from backing out of covered wagons, I'll tell you that. <laughs> the comedians at the palace were great. Chocolate manners were showing their skill. Now we take you back there as we animate. Oh, the greats on the old palace bill. He's Groucho Marx and the Marx Brothers. The Empress, the Emperor. As you were, be gone, peasants. <laughs> Just for you, take that bib off. We don't need for an hour yet. Napoleon, did you hurt yourself? You told me you'd be in Egypt tonight. That remains to be seen. Where are my faithful advisors? Francois, Alphonse, and Gaston. Do you wish their advice? Of course I do. They're always wrong. Alphonse, first gentleman in waiting. Nepali. <laughs> Alphonse. Francois, second gentleman in waiting. Napoleon. This devotion to me is touching, but it's not touching me. Gaston, third gentleman in waiting. <laughs> well, they're all taking the detour. Hmm. There's a lot of heavy lipping going on around here. But somehow or other, I got shoved out of it. But then I must not tarry. I must be off. Josephine, if I leave you here with these three snakes, I must be off. Napoleon, when you go, all France is with you. Yes, and the last time I came home, all France was with you. And a slice of Italy, too. He means me. Yes, it's you, I mean. And I could have left the S off slice. Napoleon, fight as you've never fought before. Farewell, my queen. Vive la France. Ah, Josephine. Alphonse. Why are you crying? I thought you were never coming. I thought a Napoleon was never going. Alphonse, hide. Someone's coming. Oh, it's you. I thought you were at the front. I was, but nobody answered the bell, so I came around here. Well, what are you looking for? My sword, I lost my sword. There it is, dear, just where you left it. Farewell, my queen. Vive la France. Josephine. Alphonse, hide. Josie, has he gone? Who? Anybody. Ah, Josie, you were so beautiful. <laughs> Why don't you marry me? What about Napoleon? All right, I'm going to marry him, too. He's got money. He's the guy I'm really after. Well, that's bigger me. And it's a bigger me, too. Please play. I love music. All right. You're here again? Uh, Napoleon, you're here again. What's my sword? Again? I had a swell chance to stab one of those Russians. I was going to stab him right near the gates of Moscow. If I find my sword, I must go and get him. He promised to wait, but you can't depend on those Russians. There's my sword. Ah, there's my sword. Farewell, my queen. Gaston, I thought you were never coming back. Won't you please play for me? Woman, who's been here? I have. Alone? Alone. Remember, you can fool some of the people all the time. And you can fool some of the people all the time. But you can't fool some of the people all the time. I just made that up. Lincoln stole it from me. Someone's been here. Ah, he's a harp. Tis my harp. You think you can stand there and make a meal out of Napoleon? You think it's fun being Napoleon? How would you like to be Napoleon and stand like this for 150 years? Someone's been here. I'm going to investigate. I'll smoke out those Siberian jackrabbits. I love but you. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Officer of the guard, remove the swine. 
Hey, you got the wrong swine. <laughs> Take that off, I know you. <laughs> Company fall in. Right about face. Forward, march. Napoleon, what are you going to do to them? Look at them down there in the courtyard. The firing squad will soon give you my answer. <laughs> there goes Alphonse. There goes Francois. There goes Gaston. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to present to you one of the great comedians of our time, W.C. Fields, and he'll tell you just how things are going. Now, remember, Mr. Fields, I want my daughter to marry a real outdoor sportsman. Oh, yes. Yes, ma'am. So if you prove yourself here on the ski slope, I'll consent to the marriage and give you a dowry of one million dollars. Tut, tut, Mrs. Vanderfeller. This is no challenge at all. You are certain you've skied before. Ski, ski. I invented the sport, man. Oh, yeah. Too bad the weather is not better, all this snow around and everything. <laughs> Come on, I'll meet you at the bottom of the mountain. Wait a minute. You got boards attached to your feet. Your boards. Isn't She's sliding down the mountain. Come on or something, lady. Snow makes everything too slippery. August be a better time for skiing. Oh, I can't bear to look. <laughs> ah, a furry angel of mercy. No, no, my four-footed fiend, friend. Would you deny a mortally injured human one last repast? Oh, oh. Hey, perhaps you don't recognize me. I am the great friend of the canine. Yes. Lost as a child, raised by a cocker spaniel, whom I used to call Mommy. <laughs> Here, let go of that keg and give it to me, you flea-bitten mutt. <laughs> Tell me, you look like a sporting dog. Care to engage in a little game of chance? All right. I'll think of a number. You bark once if you think it's an even number, and twice if it's odd. Now, if you win, I shall give you a succulent steak bone. If you lose, I get the keg of martini. Are you ready? All right. I'm thinking of a number. No. Tough luck, Booth. It was even. You lose. <laughs> now, now, don't you know the oath St. Bernard's take? Never be a sore loser. Not ta, toodle doodle. Yes, as I always say, any man who can con a dog is a friend to all humanity. The man who wants to marry my daughter drinks? Oh, does your daughter drink too? <laughs> Well, have a rich lush for a wife is to be doubly blessed. Oh, yes. Good day, Mr. Field. The wedding is off. Uh, who wants a mother-in-law with boards on her feet? Uh... neatest mother-in-law in the world. She puts paper under the cuckoo clock. Fang's mother is so fat, when she takes her girdle off, her feet disappear. I said to my mother-in-law, my house is your house. Last week she sold it. They're the mad, mad, mad comedians. They're the Smothers Brothers. Would you happen to know of a maiden in need of a sweet Sings in the tree. It's a shame that 
Just, just sing and stop this food because there's cooperate because there's uh, the nightingale is singing in the trees i want to add a little realism of, of the birds we don't need realism you don't have to make bird sounds i will make bird sounds Tommy, it is not necessary it is secondary to the song that there is a nightingale in the tree now, will... it doesn't make any difference what the bird sounds like now just sing it's a troubadour song and you just go fa la 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 that's all you have to do <laughs> don't you think dearest maiden Better agree to make love while the nightingale sings in the tree. La 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 The Mad, Mad, Mad Comedians were brought to you by... We'll do anything for a round of applause. Make a pie in the face, take a fall. Let him see those smiles, let him hear the guffaw. And he's ready to be tall. He's a mad, mad, mad comedian. He's a special kind of a guy. to the same woman for 41 years. Where have I failed? <laughs> Fang's mother, Moby Dick, is so fat, once a month, they shove her through the Holland Tunnel to clean it. <laughs> you can turn a giggle right into a roar Without a word, just a look. 